this life gone, live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life What's up, everybody? It's your boy Tino, a clean shaven Tino, as I finally shaved last night because, yeah, but that's not why we're here today. Guys, it is finally here, the weekend we've all been waiting for, the weekend I feel like we've been talking about since last year's weekend, and it's finally time. WrestleMania 40 weekend is here. It all starts tonight with Friday Night SmackDown. The Hall of Fame ceremony after tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we got Stand and Deliver. Tomorrow night at 4 p.m. starting, we got WrestleMania. Saturday, Sunday, we got the Slammy Awards. And then Sunday night, we got WrestleMania Sunday. Is Cody Rhodes going to finish the story? It's the greatest and the biggest tag team match of all time. Who is going to win? And who's going to walk out and be your winners of the show of shows at WrestleMania? But before we get to tonight and before we get to Friday Night Smackdown, guys, we are here today. As you guys know, we've been re-watching all of the old WrestleManias. This year, we did 1 through 15. And last year, we did 16 through 33. And obviously, I've went back and watched the others on my own. And I've even watched a few of my by myself that we've watched here on the channel. So today, I thought it'd be fun to start off WrestleMania weekend with an episode here this morning as we rank every single WrestleMania all the way from 1985 all the way to 2023, rank WrestleMania 1 through 39, and have ourselves a good old day. So that's what we're going to do here today. I'm going to get the tier maker up here in a second. I'm going to go and share stuff out as usual. So everybody in the chat, I see we got a few people here. I I didn't know how many people would actually show up in the morning, but I figured I'd try. See if anybody wants to come and hang out, see what you guys are all doing. If you guys were to, and if you guys do, come and hang out. If not, I understand though. I know it's kind of early. I know some people may not be up yet, so if you're watching this on delay, I appreciate you checking this out. Let me know how you would rank the WrestleManias in the chats. Let me know some of your favorites. Let me know some of your non-favorites. Let me know, you know, all that good stuff. I'm going to uh, see and let's get going with the retweets and all that good stuff. Got to catch up on some as I'm a little behind, you know, usual. So let's get to the chat. Um, I, I think I know who is in the chat. It's, oh, no, it's not. It's my guy, Midnight Express. I thought it was Jadis. I definitely thought it was Jadis. Nope, we got Miss Midnight Express, the first one here today. So thank you, bro, stopping by. Just trying to do a few things, as I said, before we get the tear maker out. I'm also going to remove myself from the camera. So you will just be able to hear me after we do all of this. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. Don't yell at me. I don't think you know, anybody wants to see my big fat face while we uh, rank these WrestleManias, you know. So, sharing one last thing out. And then we gonna get going and let's get it going everybody so I'm not gonna remove myself and the camera may look a little weird for a second but I gotta put it in and <laughs> put it in <laughs> I gotta put the <laughs> I gotta share my screen it's gonna look really weird for a second and then it should be okay so I'm gonna make sure it looks good on my computer actually I gotta oh we got Midnight Express all right so yeah okay so it looks good here all right here we go so there we go. It's going to look weird again for a second because I just wanted to make sure. I'm going to, I got to remove Midnight's comments so his thing is in the, there we go. So we're here. We got the tear maker up everybody. I'm like I said, just trying to uh, get it all. But we're here. We got it all up. We got the goaded WrestleManias. We got very good WrestleManias. We got the decent ones. We got the bad ones. And we got the awful ones. And then we have the ones that I will never, ever watch again. So, we're going to start this dang thing. And we're going to get WrestleMania weekend underway. So, like I said, guys, let me know in the comments. Let me know how you guys are feeling. What would you guys rank these WrestleManias? 
I'm not going to go in any specific order because I just feel like that would be kind of boring. So I'm going to go in just any type of order and any type of way I just really want to do it. So that's how we're going to do it. So I am also going to go and the, the one thing I will say is I'm going to do this year's season, the, this throwback season that we did this year before we do last year's. So we're going to do 1 through 15, and then we're going to do 16 through 30. So I guess that's a little, little, like, thing. But other than that, we're not going to do, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's start this off, and let's start off with a... Let's start it off with one of the WrestleManias I really enjoyed. And I think we had our guy Chumblebee in, join us for this one. As we saw... It was the body slam heard all around the world, guys, as we saw Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 3. It was, as I said, the biggest match and the biggest match that ever was to go down at the time. And that was the first WrestleMania that was obviously outside. It was indoors. We had Aretha Franklin. We had all that good stuff go down. So, let's start with WrestleMania number 3. And let me go and let's start it off. And let me tell you where I think this should go. Because this match also had matches like Roddy Piper and Adrian Adonis. We had Butch Reed and Coco. I don't know about that. But the match that I really enjoyed, obviously, guys, I think the match that a lot of us really enjoyed, Ricky Steamboat against Randy Savage, was a match that a lot of people's favorites. So, WrestleMania 3... It wasn't like the greatest of all greats and the best of all best, but it was, and I'm going to say it was a very good WrestleMania. So we're going to start it off really good. Jadis, I did not mean to call you. I'm sorry about that. I did not mean to call you on that one. So that one was my fault. But now let's go and let's go to WrestleMania 5 where the mega powers explode. You guys know where we saw this. And this is where Randy Savage, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Hulk Hogan had themselves a fight for the WWF, the WWF World Heavyweight Championship as at WrestleMania 4. We obviously saw Macho win the win the the tournament. We saw all the shenanigans that Ted DiBiase did and everything else like that. Well, at WrestleMania number five, we had Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage go down. And they had themselves a great match. We had the Red Rooster also. We had Bad News Brown and Jim Duggan. We had Rick Rude in the Ultimate Warrior. We had the Hart Foundation. Greg Valentine in the Honky Tonk Man. We had Andre the Giant and Jake the Snake. So, I mean, this was... It was... I'll say this about this WrestleMania. The main event was really good. And the other matches were just there. So... I'm going to say that this was a decent WrestleMania for me. Again, we're going to put these in certain orders as we get them up there. But for right now, I'm just going to put them in the very good, the decent, the bad, the awful, the... And again, this is my preference. This isn't anybody else's preference. This is what I feel, and this is what I think about it. So you may not agree, and that's completely fine. You don't have to agree with me. But again, this is just how I have to feel. And this is what I feel about it. So... Let's go and let's start off, and we're going to go to the beginning now. We're going to go to WrestleMania number one. And the only reason why this WrestleMania, I feel like, is goaded, only because if it wasn't for this WrestleMania, if it wasn't for WrestleMania one, we would not be sitting here 39 years later getting ready for this weekend to watch WrestleMania 40. So, WrestleMania one obviously didn't have the spectacular and the this and the that. They really didn't have anything besides backstage interviews and entry or they didn't even have entrances we didn't really see entrances until about like wrestlemania four or five even maybe six or seven so maybe three i think three was like the first one to be honest but wrestlemania one guys if it was not for that we would not be sitting here today so that is why that wrestlemania to me is goaded so let's go to wrestlemania number two and wrestlemania number two was a very interesting one for me i want to give a shout out to the wrestling with the 80s my guy coming in bc coming and hanging out joining me for that one but we saw hulk hogan take on big john stud in a steel cage match 
This is the one that had themselves, and they were in three different places. They were in the Nassam Coliseum, the Rosemont Horizon, the Allstate Arena, and then they were also at, and they were in, and they were at the third third location. So, at, in the Los Angeles Memorial Stadium, I should say it was. So, they've had three different locations, and again, we saw some okay matches, I guess. I mean, I kind of enjoyed that. I kind of enjoyed the Steel Cage match. I obviously, personally, myself, love the Battle Royal because I love WWF and w and the NFL doing some stuff together. But to be honest, if you're looking at this card and you're seeing it and you see Mr. T and Roddy Piper in a boxing match, this one isn't really one that you're really going to ever go, maybe go back and watch. Maybe. But I don't know. So I'm not going to say this one is like never will watch ever again because I may go back and watch the Battle Royals. But, or like the Battle Royal, the Steel Cage, maybe. But I'm going to say that this was just an not a great WrestleMania. So WrestleMania number two has got to go into the awful. So, uh, oops, sorry, my bad. I clicked on the wrong thing. So number two, WrestleMania number two has got to go onto the thing. You guys get a little, you guys get to see a little, uh, a little behind the scenes, I guess, with my computer, right? So we're here and we got WrestleMania number two. Like I said, it just, it wasn't the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Let's be real here. So now let's go. And let's do the tournament WrestleMania, which was WrestleMania number four, as we had ourselves, er, yeah, four hours spectacular, and I think, yeah, right, this is the one with the Battle Royale, right? Yeah, for the ba yeah, not the Battle Royale, I should say, I'm sorry, the tournament. And obviously, you guys know we had Andre and Hogan once again, it obviously wasn't to what we all thought it was the first time, Hogan was kind of breaking down a little bit, stuff like that. But then, you know, Ted DiBiase and everything else like that. Ted DiBiase was buying people off and doing everything that he could to get to the finals. So it was just one of those things that Ted DiBiase pretty much paid his way to the championship. And then at the end, we ended up seeing the winner, Randy Savage, Macho Man Randy Savage, win the title against Ted DiBiase with Andre the Giant in his corner. But this is the WrestleMania that I think featured the most matches. Yes, the matches weren't very long. It was kind of cool to see a tournament. But other than like the tournament and everything else like that, like it was a cool concept. But again, it wasn't like I said, like the goaded and greatest WrestleMania of all time. But I think it was a decent WrestleMania. I think it was good. And I again, I love tournaments. So I personally love and I love when they do the tournament style matches. So. I'm going to say that WrestleMania number four was decent. It, it, it got, it, 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 there's a couple things I might go back and watch. Maybe. Just maybe. So, now let's talk about WrestleMania number six. And obviously, this is where we saw Ultimate Warrior go up against Mr. Hulk Hogan. We also saw De Demolition. They had themselves a tag team title win. We saw Earthquake, Brutus Beefcake. We had Roddy Piper versus Bad News Brown, ended in a disqualification though. The Hart Foundation taking on Nikolo Volkov and Boris. We had the Barbarian taking on Tino San Martino. We had our guy Dustin Rhodes, not Dustin, I'm sorry, Dusty Rhodes and Saf Sapphire take on Macho Man Randy Savage and Queen Sherry. We had Jim Duggan taking on Dino Bravo. Ted DiBiase took on Jake the Snake. Big Boss Man took on Akum, Akum, and the Ultimate Warrior obviously took on Hulk Hogan for the WWF World Championship. So, this WrestleMania wasn't, again, I don't think it was the greatest of all time, but I think it was definitely a decent WrestleMania to where I feel like it was one that, you know, it had, like I said, the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan match was pretty good. Rick Rude and Jake the Snake, I feel, or Jimmy Snuka, could have been a little bit longer. That match only lasted four minutes. But, I mean, to be honest, I mean, now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if this is the greatest WrestleMania. And I don't want to say it's awful, but in my opinion, it just, it, it doesn't do it for me. So this is going to be the first one to go into the bad section. The bad section. It's got to go into the bad section. So, now let's go. And let's talk about WrestleMania number eight, as it was 
Ultimate Warrior taking on Ric Flair. We had Sid Justice taking on Hulk Hogan. Owen Hart taking on Skinner. We had Tataka taking on Rick Martin. Randy Savage, as I said, took on Ric Flair. Brad Hart and Roddy Piper had themselves a good match. We did that match in the showcase. Shawn Michaels had himself with Sensational Siri against Tito Santana. The Bushwhackers in the in the dark match had themselves a tag team match. And this WrestleMania, I I, I this is not gonna be everybody's favorite WrestleMania. But I don't think it's the worst WrestleMania. Again, I think that us having Hulk Hogan and Sid Justice, obviously I don't think that that was the greatest main event to have. But Randy Savage and Ric Flair was really good. Bret Hart and Roddy Piper as we did that in the showcase and as we watched it here. I thought that was a really, really good match. And I thought it was a really... So there are a few things. So I'm going to put this in the decent category. Because I just, you know, I, I, there's a couple things I'd go back and watch on it. So, let's talk about now, let's go backwards and let's talk about WrestleMania number 7, everybody. So, we at this time, you guys know, we actually watched this on the Legends biography. If you watch the Sergeant Slaughter Legends biography, he actually talked about this and how the character came about and how he was doing at this time and everything else like that. We obviously saw Hulk Hogan taking on Sergeant Slaughter. For the WWF Championship, we saw Virgil take on Ted DiBiase, Earthquake take it on Greg Valentine, we had Ultimate Warrior taking on Randy Savage as it was a retirement match, and Savage lost so he was forced to retire, Undertaker taking on Jimmy Snuka, I think this was Undertaker's first WrestleMania, I think, right, yeah, right, yeah, something like that. We had the Nasty Boys, the Brutus, the British Bulldog. The Texas Tornado, <coughs> the Texas Tornado, and we also had a tag team match of the Rockets, Mark Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels taking on the Barbarian and Haku. So, I don't, I don't think this is everybody's favorite WrestleMania, but I don't think again this is a bad WrestleMania. And now after watching the biography, I really enjoyed listening to what Sergeant Slaughter had to say. And everything else like that. So I'm gonna actually put this one in uh, decent. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's decent. I, I I don't think it's an I don't think it's an awful WrestleMania. I I think it, it, it there, there's there's worse ones, guys. Let's be real here. So now let's go to WrestleMania number nine, as we are going to talk about the one and the only at Caesar's Palace. As everybody, you guys know, this WrestleMania was not the greatest. It was not the best. And to be honest, I mean, the only thing that was really anything of anything to watch and to happen at this WrestleMania was where we saw Yokozuna, and at the end of WrestleMania, they had themselves. And it was all the shenanigans, and Hulk Hogan walked out as champion. So, it wasn't the best, and I'll be honest, it was very weird. The only thing I will say that it was, that was good about it, was the... The scenery, I love the Caesar Caesar's Palace, but if I'm looking at this, guys, we had one, two, three, four. There was four to five matches that ended in a count out, a disqualification, a some type of another shenanigans. So this WrestleMania, I don't think it's ever going to be one that I might go back and watch. Maybe. But I'm going to say that this one is just uh, bad. Or I'm going to put, honestly, I'm going to put it in the awful WrestleManias. Because Yoko getting screwed and everything else like that. And I understand now why people say it's not that great of a WrestleMania. So, let's go to WrestleMania number 10. And obviously, you guys know we had Bret Hart and Owen Hart. We had Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon for the champion of all champions. And everything and all the great things like that. And WrestleMania 10, in my opinion, I thought was good. I thought it was great. Not, okay, I wouldn't say like it was the greatest of all time. But Bret Hart and Yokozuna having themselves a little bit of a decent match. Razor, Shawn Michaels, obviously that ladder match. Yoko beating Lex Luthor. We had, what else? We had, we had Randy Savage taking on Krush. Hey, yeah, I'm not going to say this is the greatest WrestleMania. But I'm going to say it was a decent WrestleMania. And again, that ladder match was just, that ladder match was phenomenal. So, 
I really, really enjoy it. So we're going to put a decent WrestleMania. Now, number 11, WrestleMania number 11, we are going to be talking about as we had Shawn Michaels taking on Diesel. We had Razor Ramon with the 1-2-3 Kid taking on and defeating Jeff Jarrett. Undertaker defeated King Kong Bundy. We had Owen Hart and Yokozuna in a tag team match. Bret Hart and Bob Backlund in an I Quit match. And we had Diesel and Shawn Michaels. And we had Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow. So, now that I'm re-looking at this, WrestleMania 11, I'll be honest, I don't think it was that great. It, you know, it had a couple, like I said, the Shawn Michaels and Diesel match was probably the best one. But that's one of the WrestleManias that, to be honest, other than maybe one match, just like another one we'll talk about later, I don't know if I'll ever watch this one again. And again, this is my preference. This is not what I. This is not what everybody else feels, and this is just, this is how I feel about it. So don't yell at me, don't yell at anybody. I'm not coming at anybody for anything. I'm just trying to tell you how I feel after rewatching and watching all of these WrestleManias for the first time. So let's move on to number WrestleMania number twelve, as we saw Roddy Piper take on Goldust in a Hollywood backstage brawl. We had. Stunk Cold, Steve Austin take on Savio Vega. We had Undertaker take on Diesel. Shawn Michaels defeated Bret Hart in the 60-man Iron Man match. And the 60-man, the boyhood dream came true. And we had ourselves a good time. So, I'm going to put this one in a... And I'm going to say this one was very good for me. I enjoyed the 60-man Iron Man match. I enjoyed the Hollywood backstage brawl match. The six-man tag wasn't bad. We saw there, there was a lot of matches that weren't bad. Ultimate Warrior obviously taken on, and obviously it was only a minute. But it was cool to see Hunter Hearst Helms, obviously now known as Triple H, in the ring with Ultimate Warrior. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put this one in the very good for my opinion. And like I said, I love the tag team match. The tag team match, or not the tag team match. I'm sorry, the 60 man Iron Man match. I thought was really good, and it was a match that honestly probably is one I will definitely go back and rewatch. So now let's go to WrestleMania number 13, and let's talk about the one that was at the Ho Rosemont Horizon, now known as the All-State Arena, everybody. As you guys know, we had, and this one was the one where we had Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Triple H, taking on Goldust. We had Bret Hart and Stunk Cold, where Stunk Cold obviously had that famous picture where his blood is coming down, he's bleeding, all that great stuff. We had a Chicago street fight because you always love Chicago street fights. We had Undertaker taking on Psycho Sid, and yes, this match may not have been the best of best, but Undertaker and Psycho Sid went for 21 minutes, and I guess it did the job, right? So, I, I, I love Chicago, and I love the Rosemont Horizon, and just because it is in Chicago, I can't give this no, like, love. So, I'm not going to say it's awful. I'm not going to say it's great. I'm going to say it's decent. And again, like I said, a lot of people, you may not agree with me with this. So if you are not agreeing, please let me know what you guys would change, what you guys would do differently. I want to say thank you to everybody that is here coming and hanging out with us. We're almost done. We're already halfway through as we'll be finishing season two. We got two more WrestleManias to do on season two. And then we're going to go backwards and we're going to go to the WrestleManias we watched last year and more of the recent WrestleManias. And we're going to talk about all of this. Who was the first brother versus brother? Yes. Yeah, so the first brother versus brother match was Owen Hart and Bret Hart at WrestleMania number 10. So we've had one every 15 years, it seems, as we've had and we see what has obviously been happening and everything else like that. So what do you guys think about this list so far? I'm going to take a drink of my coffee. What do you guys think about this list? Do you guys agree? Do you guys think this is lame? What do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm stupid? What do you guys think? And obviously, as we get to the the recent WrestleManias, it's going to be a little bit easier because we obviously know those a lot better because they're more recent. So, we're going to get through these last two, the most recent two that we've watched on the channel, and then we're going to go and we're going to have ourselves and get to the next part. So, let me know, guys. So, let's get to, and let's talk about the WrestleMania we watched last night, 
as we watched WrestleMania 15. Shout out to my guy Lamar for coming here and hanging out with your boy Tino as we watched WrestleMania 15. And he took over for Will the Gray as we had Will the Gray was not able to make it. So last night we watched, we had Mankind and Big Show. We had Road Dog, Gold Dust, The Blue Meanie, and Ken Shamrock. We had Kane and Triple H for the first time, Sable and Tori. Shane McMahon and X-Pac, probably my favorite match of the night. We had Undertaker and Paul Barrow. And a big boss man hell in the cell match. And then we had the first Rock in Austin. So I don't want to be too mean on this WrestleMania. But this WrestleMania, I understand now why people say this WrestleMania was not the greatest of all time. So I'm never going to say that I won't watch it again. But I'm definitely going to say that it wasn't one of my favorites. And I just think it was an awful WrestleMania. Again, it had a few good things. A few okay matches. But nothing crazy. And something, again, maybe I don't know if I'll ever watch again. So, now let's go to WrestleMania number 14. And let's talk about the one that we saw. And that we saw Mr. Mr. Mike Tyson, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Undertaker and Kane. I will say that was probably my favorite match of Undertaker and Kane at WrestleMania 14. Besides, obviously, a few of the other ones they had. But to be honest, I didn't really enjoy WrestleMania's 20s. 20, Kane and Undertaker. So, Kane and Undertaker had themselves a good match. We saw Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie in a dumpster match, which I really enjoyed. So, there are a lot of matches that I probably will go back and rewatch. So, for me, I'm going to say this was a very good WrestleMania. And if you, as you notice, guys, I don't really have too many goaded WrestleManias because, again, I was obviously not around and I was not alive a lot of the time around this time. So I don't really, again, maybe as I watch these more throughout the years, maybe I'll start liking them a little bit more. But I don't know about all of that and everything. So I, I don't know. So I'm just going to say, and I'm just going to say that that's what I feel. So those are, and those are all the WrestleManias that we watched this year on the WrestleMania throwback season. So before we get into last year's season, and we talk more about the recent WrestleManias. Let me know. And let me know what you guys think. And let me know what you guys feel like. And I'm going to start. And you guys are going to be able to tell that I know a lot more about these WrestleManias. Because I'll be honest. I think I've probably watched these WrestleManias. 16 through 39. Well, okay. Not 39. Because it just came out last year. But 1 through 30. I'll say like definitely 33. I've probably seen about at least 10 times. So, you're going to realize how much more I know about these and how much I remember and everything else like that. And I might start talking a little bit, but guys, we're here. It's WrestleMania weekend, baby. So, let's get going. Let's have ourselves a good time. In the chat, let me know how you guys are feeling, how you guys are doing, what you guys thinking about this so far. Are you guys enjoying this episode? Please let me know. Oh, boy, what? What did I do? Oh God, I'm getting text messages, guys. Oh, my, she's making fun of me. Oh, well. Why is everybody got to make fun of me? Just let me be. Let me be. So, we're not going to do, and I'm not going to, because I do obviously know more about these. We're not going to do these in any specific order. I started to do these in order just because I kind of forgot of some of them, but that's okay. So, now let's get this going, and we're going to get one out of the way that we all know is not very good. And let's be honest, besides one match... I don't think any of us will ever go back and watch it again. We had a random eight-man tag team match. We did not have anything that was really too amazing. I'm sorry. I will say, I lied. I'll say this. Randy Orton and the CM Punk match was very good. But WrestleMania 27, guys, was not one of my favorites at all. Even when I go back and rewatch it, I only go back and rewatch the Undertaker and Triple H No Holds Barred match. And maybe, as I said, maybe the Randy Orton and the CM Punk match. So, I'm going to say that, honestly, other than those two matches, I don't know if I'll ever watch that again. So, I try my best not to watch it, but sometimes I find myself and I'm like, I kind of want to, I kind of, I kind of want to watch Undertaker and Triple H sometimes. But WrestleMania 27, one of my least favorites of all time. I just, I can't deal with it. So, now let's talk about WrestleMania number 18, guys, because WrestleMania 18 had a lot of great matches, 
as we saw Hulk Hogan, The Rock, have themselves, and they went at it, and they had themselves one hell of a match, which a match I think that should have ended, and that should have main evented the pay-per-view. It was Icon versus Icon, but we had Chris Jericho and Triple H definitely try to go out there and do what they could do. It just didn't work out and hope for the best. We had Edge and Booker T. We had Steve Austin and Scott Hall. We had Undertaker and Ric Flair, the famous Undertaker putting up the 10, where he was 10-0. So, this WrestleMania is one of my favorites, and one that I will probably always go back and rewatch every single year, and I just really enjoy it. So, WrestleMania 18 goes in my goaded category. WrestleMania 16, guys, 2000. We had the Fatal 4-Way Elimination Match with with the McMahons in every corner. We had the TLC match where we saw the Hardy Boys, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, and all of the great tag teams in that first ever TLC match. We had China and Too Cool go and, self- and put themselves in a match. <laughs> we had Chris Benoit, CB, Chris Jericho, and Kurt Angle. We had Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle, and Benoit again in a two out of three falls Triple threat match for the IC title and the European title. We saw Triple H defeat The Rock in that Fatal 4-Way match. We had Kane and Rikishi team up to take on D-Generation X. And to be honest, I'm not going to say it's the goaded WrestleMania, but I really enjoyed this WrestleMania, and this WrestleMania will always be one of my favorites. So I'm going to say it's very good. WrestleMania 16, it was really, really good. Now let's go to WrestleMania number 19, where it was in Seiko Field. It was Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho. We had Booker T and Triple H. We had the last Rock in Austin, and the last time we would see Austin until we saw him all those years later in Dallas, Texas at WrestleMania 38, as he made an event against Kevin Owens, as that was, guys, my first ever live stream, if you did not know. Fun fact for you guys. That WrestleMania 38 night one, Saturday night, was my first ever live stream. Coming up on two full years already of doing these live streams. That's crazy how much time fast and how fast time goes. But here we are. So, WrestleMania 19 had a lot of great things. They had that great performance. I will say that Undertaker's match really wasn't that impressive as he took on A-Train and Big Show. But, I will say that WrestleMania 19 is still one of my favorites. We had Hulk Hogan take on Mr. VKM, Mr. McMahon. We had a lot of good things go down. And in my opinion, it was one of my favorite WrestleManias. So, it's going to go in the very good category. We have, and let's talk about it, guys. Let's talk about it. Because you guys know we've been wanting to talk about it. It's WrestleMania 17, guys. WrestleMania 17. We had Jericho and William Regal. We had a triple threat hardcore match. Eddie Guerrero and Test, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. We had Shane McMahon take on Vince McMahon in the street fight. We had the TLC2 Edge and Christian taking on the Hardy Boys, the Dudley Boys. We saw a gimmick battle royal that honestly wasn't that bad. We had Undertaker and Triple H. And then we had Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock in the infamous My Way tribute video, promo video, and everything else like that. So... This one, guys, has got to be one of the best, and it's got to go in front of WrestleMania number one. It's got to be one of my favorites of all time, and this is one that I will always go back and rewatch, and I can't wait to do it again when I do all the time. So, WrestleMania 17, you love to see it, and it was a good time. Hey, we got Steve in the house. What's up, Steve? Steve, how we doing, bro? What do you think about my list so far? Do you think my list is bad? I feel like I'm kind of being mean on some of these, but I don't know. So... WrestleMania 17, one of my favorites. Now, guys, this is where we get good. Because this is where your boy Tino remembers every single WrestleMania. You guys know I talk about all the time. I started watching wrestling a lot, a lot in 2004, 2005. I really remember the 2005 all the way on. Because we had WrestleMania 21, 22, 23, etc, etc. So... Now it's time because I love these WrestleManias. And I'm just, I, I don't know. I just really do. These, these are like, these are like my WrestleManias. So now let's talk 
And let's go to WrestleMania Goes Hollywood. Number one, WrestleMania 21, guys. We saw a Money in the Bank ladder match that was born. We, where we saw an ultimate opportunist born. Where we saw Edge win the Money in the Bank match. We saw two future Hall of Famers in John Cena and Batista go out there and do their thing. We saw Kurt Angle taken on and putting himself in one hell of a match. And they just went out there and he absolutely stole the show as him and Eddie Guerrero, or I'm sorry, not Eddie Guerrero, I, Eddie Guerrero was at WrestleMania 20, we had Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle go at each other, I will say the one match that was very disappointing was obviously the sumo match, but we had Undertaker against the Legend Killer, not at the time, or well I guess at the time he was the Legend Killer, and if you guys did not see, you did not see the story about how he said and that he actually was late to the meeting before. So it's kind of crazy that all these years later that Randy Orton is now where he is. Because who knows what would it have happened. We also had and we had the final WrestleMania for Eddie Guerrero Latino Heat. As he took on Rey Mysterio. One of his best friends. Brother. And it was just a really good show. So I'm not going to say this is the goaded goaded WrestleMania. But I'm going to say this is a very good WrestleMania, and I always go back and watch this WrestleMania. So, now let's go to WrestleMania 20. As we had, it was the 20-year anniversary. It was at Madison Square Garden. We saw a guy, the leader of the chain gang, the leader of the scene nation, come back. He made his debut at WrestleMania. He won the U.S. Championship against the Big Show. He had himself a good time. We had a Fatal 4-Way Tag Team World Championship match. We had Christian and Chris Jericho as they were fighting for the love of Trish Stratus. We had Evolution. Randy Orton, Batista, and Ric Flair as Randy Orton and Batista made their debuts as they took on the Rock and Sock Connection. This would also be The Rock's last WrestleMania and so we would see him seven years later at that awful WrestleMania, WrestleMania 27. And we had also, we had the Playboy Evening Gown. You guys know, you guys know that was good times. We had that one awful match, though, of Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. As you guys know, they were leaving for Hollywood, and they were leaving for UFC. So, it wasn't that great, and it wasn't that good, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. But, I'm not going to take away from what else we had on this match with Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle. We had the triple threat match where we saw a Raven Wolverine. The, the boyhood dream came true. Him and his best friend celebrated. And no matter what happened after that, that moment right there will always be something I remember. So, this WrestleMania, I'm going to say it's a decent WrestleMania. I'm not going to say it's the greatest of all time. But it is definitely one I do watch every single year. And I think that it is very, really good. So, let's get to the Battle of the Billionaires. As we had WrestleMania 23, we had John Cena and Shawn Michaels. We had the Battle of the Billionaires with Donald Trump and Vince McMahon. As it was Umaga taking on Batista. We had Batista, or Umaga taking on Bobby Lashley, I should say. As it was Batista taking on Undertaker. We saw Mr. Kennedy win Money in the Bank. And we also had ourselves an extreme match with all the old ECW legends against the new breed, the ECW. We also had ourselves a championship match with the Divas. The women at the time. So, WrestleMania 23. It was obviously the 20 year anniversary of them being at WrestleMania 3. With Hogan and Andre in the same stadium. With Aretha Franklin doing the national anthem. All of that good stuff again. So, Aretha Franklin. WrestleMania 23. It's not my favorite WrestleMania of all time. I will say that I really only go back and watch 3 matches. We have Great Khali and Kane also. We had Montez, or Montez Ford. We had MVP as he put the U.S. Championship on the line. We had, as I said, that eight-man tag team match. We had a Lumberjills match as it was Molina taking on Ashley, Miss Ashley Marazzo. So, WrestleMania 23, it's not, like I said, it's not my favorite, but it's not the worst to me. So, I'm going to put this in the end. Almost bad, but it, it's decent. It works. It, it, again, there were good matches with Batista and Undertaker. Cena and Shawn Michaels will always be one that I love. So, it was it was decent. It, 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 it does the job. 
So, let's skip a few years, and let's go to, and let's talk about WrestleMania 26, back in 2010, where we had it at the Arizona Cardinals Stadium, we had Triple H and Sheamus, we had Edge and, Edge and Chris Jericho as Edge made his return after having that awful injury that he had to suffer and that he almost had to retire from, but Edge came back and he did his thing. We had Batista and John Cena. We also had career versus streak as it was Undertaker taking on Shawn Michaels. We had Randy Orton take on Legacy, Cody Rhodes, and Ted DiBiase. Jake the Snake, or Jake the Snake, Jack Swagger won the last Money in the Bank match to ever take place at WrestleMania. We had Triple H, as I said, take on Sheamus. CM Punk took on Rey Mysterio. Bret Hart took on Vince McMahon and whatever that match was. We had Alicia Fox, Lay Cool, and Michelle McCool with Maurice and Vicky Guerrero take on Beth Phoenix, Eve Torres, Gal Kim, Kelly Kelly, and Mickey James in a 10 Divas tag team match. And then, as I said, we had Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Batista, and John Cena. So, again, this one is not going to be, like, goaded. It's not going to be, like, the greatest of all time. But I think it's a decent WrestleMania. It does. It has some good matches. It has some good things it does. But, to me, it's not, like, my, like, all-time favorite favorites of favorites. So, now let's go to, and let's go to the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania. As it was 2009, and it was Randy Orton Triple H. We had a Money in the Bank match where we saw the best in the world at what he does win. We had a Women's Battle Royal that was won by a dude. We had one of the greatest matches, though, of all time. That maybe should have main evented, but then ended up didn't. And it got sat, and it got sat down by... And it was not because they ended up having Triple H and Randy Orton main event because it was the title. But now I feel like if this were to happen nowadays, I feel like Shawn Michaels and Undertaker would have wrestled and would have had themselves the main event. We had Brother vs. Brother 15 years later as we had Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy in an Extreme Rules match. I love the story, but the match obviously didn't. And we've heard stories about it, about how the match didn't get what it was deserved. So, it kind of makes me upset with that, but WrestleMania 25, I think I've watched it over 14, 15 times. I can't tell you guys how many times I've watched this WrestleMania. We had John Cena, Big Show, and Edge in a triple threat match, which, which I thought was, again, it wasn't the greatest, but it was, it was a triple threat match, and I always enjoyed it at the time. But obviously, that Undertaker and Shawn Michaels match, the, probably the greatest WrestleMania match of all time was just phenomenal so wrestlemania 25 it's got to go in my very good category because i've seen it i love it i'll probably rewatch it again over and over again as these years go on so now let's go and i know i'm kind of moving around here and there but i'm trying to go through certain points so now let's go and let's talk about which one should we do next let's talk about wrestlemania 25 24 let's talk about wrestlemania 24 because as you guys know this is the one where we had floyd money mayweather take on the big show in a, in a no dq match we had undertaker take on edge in the main event as edge was trying to be the one to defeat the streak we had batista and umaga in a raw and smackdown match we had a Playboy Bunny match as we saw Molina and Beth Phoenix take on Maria and Ashley as Snoop Dogg was the, the guest or I forgot what they called him at the time. We had Randy Orton take on John Cena, take on Triple H, which could have very well been a very good match, but I think that it just didn't. And if you guys remember, this WrestleMania, the lights went out and they had a problem for a minute because the lights went out during... I think the women's Playboy Bunny match, and then they were out for the Cena, Randy Orton, and Triple H match, and I think they fixed them by the main event, but for a minute there, they were out. We had CM Punk before he won at 25, he had to win at 24. CM Punk actually went back-to-back -back Money in the Bank, and is still one of the only superstars to do that, 
And I think he is the only superstar to go back to back. So, CM Punk won Money in the Bank and WrestleMania 24, to be honest. One of my favorites, because we also had the retirement match of the Nature Boy Ric Flair. At least we thought it would be. Because the Nature Boy retired. We never saw him again until he had his final match about a year and a half, two years ago. I still cannot believe this man had a match like that. So, WrestleMania 24 will always be one of my personal favorites just because I enjoy it. I love the theme song. I love the outdoor arenas. I don't know about how you guys feel about them, but the outdoor arenas just make it feel a little better, make it feel like a WrestleMania, and I just love it. So, I'm going to say, and to me, this one was very was good, but I don't think it was decent. I'm not going to put it at like the best. But I'm going to put it at where I think that it was and that it should be. And while I'm sitting here, let's put that over here. Let's put... No, no, no. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. No, 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 no. There we go. So, WrestleMania 24, I think was very good. Now, let's talk about... WrestleMania 22, everybody, before we get into Once in a Lifetime and all of those shenanigans and more of the ones you guys probably remember. Let's talk about the one that was in Chicago, Illinois at the Rosemont All-State Arena 2006, guys. We saw Money in the Bank where we saw the one and the only Rob Van Dam win the Money in the Bank. We saw John Cena and Triple H have themselves one hell of a match. Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon had an Extreme Rules No Holds Barred match. Edge and Mick Foley had a hardcore, no DQ, whatever you want to call that type of a match, which was phenomenal. We had Undertaker and Mark Henry in a casket match. And WrestleMania 22 also had where we saw Rey Mysterio, the Buicka Buicka 1, 619, became your World Heavyweight Champion. As he defeated Randy Orton and Kurt Angle on the show of shows. And it was one hell of a time as we all celebrated in Chi-Town, Illinois. It was and it will always be one of my favorites. We had the Boogeyman take on Booker T and Queen Charmel. JBL took on Chris Benoit. We also had Mickey James take on Trish Stratus. And then as I said the other match. We also had a Playboy Bunny uh, evening gown match. I kind of forgot about that. Or, I should say, a Playboy Bunny pillow fight? Sure. But, WrestleMania 22, guys, in my hometown of Chicago, had some great matches, some great memories that I will always remember as a kid. And you guys know I've talked about this WrestleMania a lot. And I always tell you the story about The Undertaker, how The Undertaker was in a casket match, and my neighbor, shout out to you, Todd. Todd, for always scaring the hell out of me. But you guys know if you haven't heard this story, you might have heard this story about 12 times. But WrestleMania 22, Undertaker wins the casket match. And I'm scared of Undertaker. It's raining outside. It's thundering. It's lightning. So my neighbor thought it would be a great idea to go into the back, knock on the door, and then go and say, oh, the Undertaker's here. And then he rang the doorbell. So it was... It was not a good time as a 10-year-old watching WrestleMania 22. But, as I've gotten older, I understand. But, WrestleMania 22 will always be one of my favorites and one of the goaded WrestleManias for me. And no matter how old I get, I very well go back and watch it all the time. So, let's go. And now let's talk about... And, right, and you know what? Now that we're at 28, let's just go in order... And let's talk about these in order, and then we'll get done. And we'll... Jadis, don't laugh at me, bro. Jadis, Jadis, I'm gonna fight you. When did I real... Okay, so what age? So, I was... I'll say probably WrestleMania 26. So, I was a freshman in high school. Because I remember 25... And I still kind of believed because of The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels and all of that. But once 26 hit, my friends started like telling me 
And they were like, listen, bro, it's fake. I was like, okay, listen, I'm not trying to here to argue with you, bro. So, I'm going to say 2000, like 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I knew it was fake, but like 2010 is when I was like, okay, like it's obvious, you know, yeah. So, let's go in order now, and let's go to once in a lifetime that turned into twice in a lifetime, as you guys know. This was the WrestleMania that was in Miami, Florida, the hometown of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. As you guys know, we had WrestleMania 27, where we had The Rock cost John Cena the World Championship match, and then the night after on Raw, they made the biggest main event of all time, as it was legend versus legend. It was decade versus decade. It was it was icon versus this guy. It was decade versus that. It was era versus era. It was the attitude era against the ruthless aggression era. It was John Cena against The Rock. And they had a one year build that built up to WrestleMania 28. And it was one of those things that I really, I always talk about this time. This time always means a lot to me. Because my dad was always a wrestling fan. And my dad's one of the people that got me into wrestling. But obviously as the years have went on, he stopped watching and everything else like that. But WrestleMania 28, when we had John Cena and The Rock once in a lifetime at Sun Life Stadium. I got my dad to rewatch it. The fact that it's been 12 years is kind of crazy. But I was able to get my dad to rewatch it and get back into it with Rock and Cena. And everything else like that. So this WrestleMania will always have a special place for me. Just because of that moment. But we also had Sheamus and Daniel Bryan in the infamous 18 second match. We had Kane and Randy Orton. We had Big Show and Cody Rhodes. Undertaker and Triple H went outside. And it was the end of an era inside Hell in the Cell with Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee. We had Team Johnny against Team Teddy. CM Punk against Y2J, Chris Jericho, and then we had John Cena and The Rock. So, for me personally, this is always going to be one of my favorite WrestleManias. It's going to be a goaded WrestleMania to me because I love the John Cena Rock stuff. Yes, the match wasn't maybe the best of best, but CM Punk and Jericho were good. We had, as I said, we had the Hell in the Cell match. We had Randy Orton and Kane that I thought was really good. So, WrestleMania 28. I think is goaded for me. So let's go now to WrestleMania 29, where we ended up seeing once in a lifetime times two, as one year later John Cena wins the money in the or wins the Royal Rumble. He chooses to face the Rock at WrestleMania, and then we have ourselves once in a lifetime, twice in a lifetime in New York City and in the show of shows in New York, New Jersey. So we had that match. We had CM Punk take on The Undertaker as Undertaker and CM Punk tried to be and CM Punk wanted to be the one in 20 and 1. We had The Shield making their debut at WrestleMania as Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins took on Randy Orton, The Big Show, and Sheamus. Mark Henry took on Ryback. Team Hell No took on D Big E, Big E Langston, Big E, and Dolph Ziggler. We had Fandango making his WrestleMania debut as he took on Y2J Chris Jericho. Don't know why this was the match, but we had Alberto Del Rio take on Jack Swagger for the World Heavyweight Championship. As I said, we had CM Punk take on The Undertaker. We had Triple H take on Brock Lesnar. And if, under, or if Triple H would have lost, he would have had to retire from the WWE. And then we had John Cena and The Rock times two. As John Cena got his win, he got his redemption, and he ended up winning. And he went on to be and win the WWE Champion. And we would be, and this would be the last time we would see Dwayne The Rock Johnson for a few years. But this would be the last time we see Dwayne The Rock Johnson wrestle in a ring. Besides when he had the squash match with Eric Rowan at WrestleMania 32. So, WrestleMania 29, it's not my favorite but it's decent. It, it, it gets the job done. It, it gets... there. Like I said, there's always those three matches I go back and watch. I love the CM Punk. I love the Undertaker stuff. Brock Lesnar and Triple H was always good. And it was always just one of my favorites. So, 
CM Punk, Undertaker, Cena and Rock, obviously it is what it is, but Triple H and Brock, it, they, have, they had some few good matches. Now, let's get to WrestleMania 30, everybody, as we had, it was Yeslemania, we just didn't know yet. As we had Daniel Bryan, it was with the authority, it was with the Yes movement, and it was with everything that was going down. So, we had Yeslemania, we had Bray Wyatt take on John Cena, we had... As we had under, or I should say, we well, we'll talk about the Undertaker match in a second. But we had Triple H take on Daniel Bryant. We had Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Rock in the ring together. We had The Shield as they took on the New Age Outlaws and Kane. Cesaro won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal as the Andre the Giant Battle Royal made its debut. We had. A Vicky Guerrero Invitational as AJ Lee defeated and won against all the women of the roster. We had Brian Danielson pick up the win and have himself the Yasomania moment, walking out of and as champion in New Orleans. But obviously, this WrestleMania is known for what? The streak and what happened where Brock Lesnar defeated The Undertaker and our mouths dropped. And Undertaker's streak was over. And it was not a reality. And still, 10 years later, it still does not feel real that the Undertaker's streak ended against Brock Lesnar. But it did. And again, as I said, that it's just been 10 years already. That kind of makes me sick. But it is what it is. So, WrestleMania 30 will always be one of my favorites. It's like right on the cusp of being goaded. But it's not like right, right there. Just because it's not one of those that I will watch all the way through. Because there are still some matches that I feel like you can skip. But it's like right there for me. So let's talk about WrestleMania 31. As one year later, we had Roman Reigns taking on Brock Lesnar. We had Randy Orton taking on Seth Rollins in a match that we thought was very good. We saw Daniel Bryant put on... And come back one year later after starting off and ending WrestleMania last year at WrestleMania 30. He started it off and he won a ladder match to win the IC Championship. We saw a tease between Stephanie McMahon and Triple H against The Rock and Ronda Rousey. We saw a lot of great things go down and this was the play button WrestleMania. We saw the Bella Twins take on Paige and AJ Lee. Which would actually be AJ Lee's last WrestleMania to this day, Big Show won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Triple H took on the icon Sting as this was Sting's one and only WrestleMania match. John Cena took on a young Rusev for the U.S. Championship. Undertaker made his return as he took on the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt. And then as I said, the heist of the century, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, turned into a triple threat as Seth Rollins cashed in his money in the bank. And he went on to win the world champion and walk out. And it's a moment that we still remember to this day. So, again, not goaded WrestleMania, but I'm going to say it's a very good WrestleMania. So, now let's get to WrestleMania 32. Because WrestleMania 32 was one that could have been very, very good. But, injuries happened and a lot of superstars were out. Such as Seth Rollins, John Cena. The Rock, Bray Wyatt, the Wyatt family, so many superstars. I remember watching this WrestleMania, and I remember being like, I'm just so sad with all of these superstars out. So they really had to figure out something. But we had, and I want to say we had Kalisto take on Ryback in the pre-show. We had Team Total Divas, as this would mark Brie Bella's last WrestleMania, as she was in a 10-woman tag team match. And we had the Usos taking on the Dudley Boys in the pre-show. The fact that that was on the pre-show is disgusting. We had AJ Styles making his WrestleMania debut against Chris Jericho. Zack Ryder won the IC ladder matches. We saw KO Mania won. We saw Sami Zayn, Stardust, Cody Rhodes' last WrestleMania until he made his debut at and at WrestleMania 38 Night 1, WrestleMania Saturday. We saw the League of Nations take on the New Day, which was that not greater match. We saw Brock Lesnar take on Dean Ambrose in a no-holds-barred match that could have been very good, but it wasn't. Charlotte Flair 
took on Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch in a triple threat match for the Women's World Champion as they finally retired the Divas Championship. Undertaker took on Shane McMahon in that infamous Hell in the Cell match. Baron Corbin won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. As I said, The Rock made his return in a six-second squash match. And then Roman Reigns got booed out of the building as he walked out as your WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And he went on and he had himself. And it was not a good time for Roman in and at Dallas in the Cowboy Stadium at all. So, re-watching this WrestleMania, I'm not going to say it's the worst WrestleMania, but it's also not my favorite WrestleMania. So, I'm going to put this one, and I'm going to put this one in not like the bad, but I'm going to put it at the end of my decent, because I just did not really like the WrestleMania, and I really did not enjoy it to where, like, I don't know, it just wasn't for me, and that's okay, it's not for everybody. Like I said, so many people were injured, so many people were going to be going down, and it was just one of those that, you know... It was what it was. They did what they had to do. So, now let's talk about WrestleMania 33. Because this WrestleMania was the one where they had the roller coaster. We had our guy buzzing with Marlo was there. I think Irish Wrestling Gary was there. Or Jerry. Gary. I I just want to make sure I say that right. I I said Gary. Jerry. So, WrestleMania 33 was obviously 17 hours. I remember this WrestleMania ending at like midnight. They had they had four or they had three matches on the pre-show as we saw Neville defeat Austin Aries. Mojo Raleigh won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Dean Ambrose defeated Baron Corbin for the IC Championship. AJ Styles defeated Shane McMahon in a great match to start off the show. KO and Y2J got screwed, which it should have been the main event, but it wasn't the main event. We had Bailey take on Charlotte Flair, Nia Jax and Charlotte and Sasha Banks in a fatal four-way elimination match. We saw a fatal four-way tag team match where one of my favorite moments happened, and we saw the return of my favorite tag team, the Hardy Boys guys, as they did their thing. They walked down the ring, and they won the Raw Tag Team Champions in that fatal four-way ladder match, and people think that we could very well be seeing them again very shortly this weekend at WrestleMania. We had John Cena and Nikki Bella take on The Miz and Maurice as John Cena and Nikki won. John Cena proposed, and then we all know how that went. John Cena ended up, you know, yeah. We had Seth Rollins take on Triple H in an unsanctioned match as Seth Rollins won. Randy Orton took on Bray Wyatt in that weird championship match. Brock Lesnar and Goldberg had themselves their four-minute match that was supposed to happen 13 years before, but it didn't. We had Naomi win the six-pack challenge between Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Carmella, Mickey James, and Natalia, and then we saw a really bad main event of a no holds barred Roman Reigns and The Undertaker. As Roman Reigns would defeat and he would defeat and beat The Undertaker. So, personally, I don't despise this WrestleMania, but this WrestleMania is just so long that it just like I feel like it's a chore to go back and rewatch because it's like five hours. And like 55 minutes. So I definitely do go back and rewatch it. I watch some of the matches that I enjoy. But I do not go back and rewatch this one from beginning to end. Because it's just too much. So for that reason. It's going to be. And it's got to go to decent. Because I like it. But it's just it's so long. The moment is good. I love the Hardy Boys return. But I just. I don't know. It just, it's so long, guys. And sometimes, I'm losing track of these WrestleManias. So, let's move on to WrestleMania 34. As we went back at WrestleMania 30, it was in the Superdome. And they decided that they wanted to go back to the Superdome as we had ourselves a show. And they went on to do their thing in the Superdome. As we had Matt Hardy win the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Cedric Alexander defeated Mustafa Ali. Naomi defeated Bayley in the first ever women's battle royal. Seth Rollins defeated The Miz and Finn Balor for the IC title. Charlotte defeated Asuka. 
Jinder defeated Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, and Rusev. Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey defeated Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. The Bludgeon Brothers defeated The Usos and The New Day. Undertaker defeated John Cena in a two-minute match. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon defeated KO and Sami Zayn. Nia Jax defeated Alexa Bliss. AJ Styles defeated Shinsuke Nakamura. Braun Strowman and Nicholas, yes, Nicholas, won the tag team champions against Cesaro and Sheamus. And then Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman defeated Roman Reigns for the championship as this was the one that we had. Roman Reigns get beat up really bad. He loses the title. Rock, Brock walks backstage. He throws him at Vince. And then we obviously see what happens. So, for me, there are a few good matches on this card. But it's just not my thing. And it's a WrestleMania. If I do and if I can, I definitely would skip a lot of it. And there are only a few matches I would go back and rewatch. Maybe. But not really. Like, I feel like the best match of that whole pay-per-view was Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. And that was a mixed tag team match. So, yeah. But, now let's get to, and let's get to WrestleMania 35, as this would be the last WrestleMania that was not two nights, as every WrestleMania from here on out would be, and after 35 it would be two nights. This would be the WrestleMania that we saw Triple H and Batista have their last ever WrestleMania match, we wouldn't know it at the time, but now we do. We saw Seth Rollins open the show against Brock Lesnar as he defeated him for the championship. Braun Strowman won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder defeated the Revival. And they defeated them for the Raw Tag Team Champions. Carmella won the Women's Battle Royal. And Tony Nese won the Cruiserweight title. We also saw the Usos defeat Aleister Black and Ricochet. Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev and The Bar. A Falls Count Anywhere match between Shane McMahon and The Miz, where Shane McMahon won. The Iconics got their moment as they won the Women's Tag Champions against The Boss and Hugging the Hug and hu the Boss and Hug connection of Bailey and Sasha Banks, Nia Jax and Tamina, and then Beth Phoenix and Natalia. But this moment right here saved this WrestleMania for me. It was Kofi Mania. As we saw Kofi Kingston finally get his world championship, and he did his thing, and he had himself a phenomenal day. And Kofi Mania was born. We saw Samoa Joe squash Rey Mysterio. Roman Reigns defeated Drew McIntyre. Triple H defeated Batista, as I said, would be their last match ever. We just didn't know it yet. We saw Baron Corbin retire Kurt Angle. The Demon Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley defeated, and... The Demon won the IC Championship. And then, in the main event, the winner-take-all triple threat. Becky Lynch defeated Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey in one of the weirdest endings to WrestleMania. So, this WrestleMania isn't my favorite. It's not bad. It's not awful. It's just decent. So, I got a lot of decent WrestleManias. A lot of decent ones. So, now let's go. And you guys know, this WrestleMania was obviously supposed to take part and this match, and this WrestleMania was supposed to be in Tampa, Florida. It was supposed to be at the Buccaneers Stadium. But then, obviously, we saw, and it was one of the things. And it was one of those WrestleManias that was weird. But they did what they could with not having fans. And it was just one of those times that I feel like we just don't want to remember. But I feel like in years... And I feel like as the years go on, we're going to only appreciate that time. Because we got a lot of good things out of this WrestleMania. We got the Boneyard match between Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. Or Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. Undertaker and AJ Styles. We had Becky Lynch defeat Shayna Baszler. That I think Shayna Baszler should have won. We had John Morrison defeat Jimmy, Jimmy Uso and Kofi Kingston in a triple threat ladder match. Seth Rollins and KO put on a good show. Braun Strowman defeated Big Show, which didn't make sense. Liv Morgan defeated Natalia on the pre-show, so there's everybody's Liv Morgan moment. We had Otis and Dolph Ziggler, which I thought was going to be a really good rivalry going into WrestleMania, but then obviously stuff happened. Edge and Randy Orton in that last man standing match we had, obviously, and I said, as I said, 
We had Drew McIntyre win and beat Brock Lesnar, but Drew McIntyre did not get his moment in front of his fans. And then we also had the Firefly Funhouse of John Cena and Bray Wyatt in the match that was very interesting, very weird. But after watching the Bray Wyatt documentary on Monday and seeing how much work went into it and everything, it was one of those things that it just is awesome to see, and I really enjoyed it. And I was really happy to watch it and see it. And it is one of those that I do go back and rewatch. But this WrestleMania, it was such a weird time and everything else like that. So again, I'm going to put this one in my decent category because it wasn't the best. It was a weird time that we all want to try to forget. And it's just not the times that we all really want to and we all want to remember as much as we do. So I'm going to, and now we're going to go to WrestleMania 37. As the fans were back, kinda, as we had half capacity, but we saw Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks have themselves a main event. We saw, and we had ourselves, that it was Bobby Lashley taking on Drew McIntyre. Naomi won and eliminated the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot, to win the Tag Team Champions. Cesaro got his WrestleMania moment against Seth Rollins. AJ Styles kind of fell down a little bit as he teamed up with Omos to take on the New Day for the tag titles. Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon had this weird hell, er, steel cage match. We saw Bad Bunny, though, make his debut and put on one hell of a show against The Miz and Johnny Drip Drip, Johnny Morrison. We had Randy Orton and The Fiend take on each other in that weird beginning match to start off WrestleMania. KO and Sami Zayn had themselves a match as Logan Paul made his debut WrestleMania. Apollo Crews and Big E fought for the IC title. And this would be the last time the IC title was defended at WrestleMania on the main card until last year as Gunther and Drew McIntyre won. And then we saw Roman Reigns stack him as he started his reign of terror at WrestleMania against Edge and Daniel Bryan. He pretty much sent them both to AEW. And Roman Reigns was stacking people at WrestleMania 37. So, WrestleMania 37, again, it's not my favorite. But we do have really good matches with Bianca and Sasha. With, um, let's see what else we got. We got, okay, <laughs> I said, oh, we got the Bad Bunny match. We got, I mean, there is a few good ones. Cesaro and Seth. But, overall... I don't think this was, like, the greatest of greats. And, to be honest, it's one that, like, I'll watch. It's not bad. It's not awful. But it's just not one that, like, you know, like, I just, I don't, as I'm looking at it, like, maybe the tag team match, Sasha and, Sasha and Bianca, that's probably about it that I would go back and rewatch because, and, and the main event. So, it's not one of my favorites, but it's not awful. It just, it's not that great to me. But now let's talk about WrestleMania 38, which would be the last WrestleMania that we would see. And it would be called the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. It was, guys, our two, and it will be our two-year reunion on Saturday. As this was the WrestleMania, we started doing all these live streams. As we are had ourselves, WrestleMania Saturday. We had Stone Cold Steve Austin making his return to the ring that we just did not know yet about. We had Drew McIntyre take on Happy Corbin. The Miz and Logan Paul as Logan Paul made his debut as they took on the Mysterio family of Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. We had Bianca and Becky Lynch. Cody Rhodes make his return after being gone and not coming back as Stardust. He came back as the American Nightmare. He rose from the bottoms and Cody Rhodes make his debut and his return to the WWE and now we are hoping that he finishes his story this weekend we had Charlotte Flair take on Ronda Rousey Stun Cold took on KO we had the Street Profits take on RK Bro and the Alpha Academy Bobby Lashley took on Omos Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn had themselves a good anything goes match Sasha Banks and Naomi won a fatal four-way match for the tag team titles. Edge and AJ Styles had themselves a match. And we saw the rebirth and the boring and the whatever you want to call it of Judgment Day. 
Sheamus and Rich Holland defeated the New Day. Pat McAfee defeated Austin Theory. We don't want to talk about the other match. And then we had Roman Reigns, winner take all, win and defeat Brock Lesnar to become your undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So, I'm going to say that this one was another decent one. And I'm going to say I really enjoyed this one. Because it wasn't the greatest. It wasn't the best. But, it was two nights. We had Cody return. We had a lot of things happen. And it was a lot of things that it was just, it was a good show. And plus, it will always have a place in my heart because it will be the first time that we ever started doing these live streams. And if it wasn't for you guys coming and hanging out with me all the time, we would not be able to do this and we would not be able to have our times like we do right now. So, thank you to you guys for seriously coming and hanging out all the time, watching these episodes, enjoying everything that we do here, and all of that good stuff. So I just want to say thank you to all of you guys, because again, as I said, I really truly could not do it without any of you. So, we have one more WrestleMania, guys. We've went through 38 WrestleManias. We've been here for almost an hour and 10 minutes. I thought this would go a little bit quiet. I do see your comments, Jadis, but because I have to share my screen, I have to, and I'm going to go through the comments after we get through this. So, keep leaving your comments, keep leaving your concerns. And we'll get through this, and we'll talk to you after. I tell you where I rank WrestleMania 39 last year. WrestleMania 39, probably one of the greatest WrestleMania night ones that we've ever seen, and that we may very well ever see, where we saw the Usos take on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. We had Austin Theory take on John Cena to start off night one. Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley had themselves one hell of a match. Seth Rollins and Logan Paul put on a banger. Rey Mysterio and Dominic, Dominic had a whooping as Rey Mysterio whooped that Dom. We had Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. Pat McAfee took on The Miz. And as I said, KO, Sami Zayn, The Usos, one hell of a night one. Night two wasn't as great, but we had Brock Lesnar, which most likely will be Brock Lesnar's last WrestleMania match. As he took on Omos, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler won the Women's Showcase. Gunther and Sheamus and Drew McIntyre went out there and stole the show on night two. Bianca Belair and Asuka had a good match. Snoop Dogg defeated The Miz. We had Edge defeat the Demon Finn Balor inside of Hell in the Cell, which will be Edge's last WrestleMania. And then obviously, guys, we saw Mr. Lamar, Solo Sokoa, Steel, and cost Cody Rhodes his moment. We saw the chicken thrown into the ring and we saw the site that we've now been looking at for one full year. WrestleMania 39, guys, has got to be goaded. WrestleMania 39 will always be and it will always be one of my favorites. WrestleMania 39, enjoyed it. Both nights were great and it was the good of and show of shows. So, we got 86 people in here. I want to say thank you to all of you guys coming here and hanging out with me. But here is my list. And let me know what you guys think and what you guys feel about this list of ranking every single WrestleMania from 1 to 39. So look at the list real quick. I'm going to take another drink of water. And then we're going to get to the chat. And we're going to chat until we come back here at 2.30 to preview WrestleMania 40. As I give you my predictions on who I think is going to win every single match at the show of shows. And who I believe will walk out as champions and all of that good stuff. So, look at this list. I'm going to take a drink. And then we'll get to it. So, there's the list. Let me know what you guys think. Leave it up for a couple more seconds. I will share this list on my social medias once we do it and once we get out of here. So I'm now going to remove this. I'm going to put my camera back on. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And then we're going to get going. And let's talk and let's see what the chat's got going down. Guys, I appreciate you. We've been here for 83. 83. We've been here for an hour and 18 minutes, 19 minutes now. So I want to thank you guys all coming here and hanging out with me. Let me know what you guys think about my list. Do you guys think it was good? Do you guys think it was bad? 
What do you guys think? So let's get to the chat. We got Midnight Express. What's up, Midnight Express? Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Yo, what's up, Jadis? I did not feel that. I did not feel that. I did not mean to call you. I'm sorry, Jadis. I did not mean to call you. My bad. It's okay. Yeah, my bad. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Oh, shoot. Hey, the annual event is tomorrow. Let's go. Who was the first ever brother? Yeah, so the three brother versus brother matches will have, well, I guess four. Because if you want to say Undertaker and Kane, but they're not really brothers. So I don't know if you can really say that. So, Brett and Owen, Matt and Jeff, and now Jimmy and Jay. Those are the three brother-on-brother -brother matches that have happened at WrestleMania. And it's every 15 years. We got Fantasy Armchair in the house. What's up, Fantasy Armchair? What is the one mania that you know by heart like every episode? WrestleMania 22. So, I think I've seen WrestleMania 22 the most. And probably, besides on like how I feel about certain things, it may very well be one of my favorites. And it may be my favorite of all time. Just because it was in Chicago, Rey Mysterio won, John Cena won, Rob Van Dam won, Undertaker won. A lot of my favorites won, and it was also in Chicago. So, but yeah. Kind of hyped. I mean, you should be hyped. You should be hyped for this weekend. There should be no reason you're not hyped for this weekend. Tino, my man. What's up, Eric? Hey, we got Steve in the house. He says, Tino, Tino, Tino. I appreciate you, Steve. You know The Rock had been in four different WrestleManias in the past four decades. I'm saying that. Yes, you are. That's big facts, Jadis. Jadis, stop laughing at me, bro. Jadis, why are you laughing at me? Guys, you see this nonsense? You see Jadis laughing at me? Question. When did you realize WW 2010, as I said? Oh, okay. So Jadis has a question. I don't know how to say this, but the... Okay, so... Huh? Wait. Wait. I got to reread. Okay, so I... Not what I... Okay, so I got to reread this question. So Jadis says, I have a question. I don't know how to say this, but the Super Bowl passed. If the Super Bowl and Mania were the same day, what population of YouTube would win? Like, would they stream more of Mania or the stream more? Well, they would never do that. Specifically for the fact that they would not want... And they do not want to have the competition. So it will always be how it is now. Super Bowl will always be in February. And then we will always see WrestleMania in April. They would never do it. It would never work. And there would be too much competition for both. And the ratings would be way too off. And it just wouldn't work. So I don't think that would ever happen, Jadis. But that's a good question. I like it. Did you know Roman Reigns' real name is Joe? Yes, I did. It's Joe. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's his real name. Yes, it is. Did you know Roman Reigns ended... Did Roman Reigns end Undertaker's streak? Wasn't he 11 and no? Huh? Undertaker was 21... Or 20 and 1. And... Or 21 and 1. And Brock Lesnar won a... And one, Jadis, you're so, Jadis, what, Jadis, why are you so mean? Jadis, listen, bro. Jadis, why are you so mean? You guys see this nonsense from Jadis? Jadis saw you just talking that nonsense. Jadis, you're a bully. But, CM Punk on commentary, you think, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Beat Undertaker. No, well, no, he did win, but Brock Lesnar broke the streak. Brock Lesnar will have always broken the streak. No matter what. We could we could say it's Roman Reigns, but we all know it's Brock Lesnar. Like, let's be real here. We all know it's Brock Lesnar that would, and that is the one that broke the streak. Come on, there's just no, again, like, I get it, but, like, I also don't get it. So, Brock Lesnar broke the streak, guys. I hate to say it, but it's true. So, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming here and hanging out on this special morning episode. I figured it'd be fun to come here and hang out in the morning for a little bit before, as I said, guys, we'll be back here at 2.30 as we preview the show of shows. It's that time of the year. It's that time of the month. 
It's that time of April as we preview the show of shows. I don't know why I got so close to the camera. My bad there, guys. But WrestleMania preview show. Come and hang out as we preview all of the matches that are going to go down. Jimmy and Jay, Seth, Cody, Rock, Roman, Logan, Randy, KO, Becky, and Rhea, EO and Bailey, Roman and Cody. We got so many matches to get to. We got a tag team six-man street fight in Philadelphia. It's a lot of things go down, guys. Come and hang out at 2.30 as we preview all 14 matches. I get you ready for Russ Smackdown, the Hall of Fame Smackdown edition, as we'll be live here tonight at 7 o'clock also. As we watch the final show before WrestleMania, we watch the Hall of Fame ceremony as Muhammad Ali, Paul Heyman, Bol Nakado, the U.S. Express, and everybody that will go in into the WWE 2024 class of the Hall of Fame. So, want to thank you guys all today for coming and hanging out. Let's give today's MVP to the one and the only Midnight Express. Midnight Express coming here and hanging out with your boy Tino. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming here. All episode coming and hanging out. But guys, that's all I got here for you today. This right now at least. Because as I said, we'll be back here in a few hours. For the WrestleMania preview show. So, guys, go get yourself some lunch. I'm going to go do that. Go and follow all the social medias on the ticker below. Make sure, if you have not yet, you become a member. You lose, you leave a super chat or two. You go and get yourself some merchandise on bonfire.com. But also, guys, if you have not yet, please hit that like button. Double check because I know sometimes you have not. But that's okay. Just double check. Hit that like button. It helps us here on the channel. Make sure to subscribe as we are exactly 38 subscribers to 1900. Let's try to get that, guys, before the end of WrestleMania. 38 subscribers. I think it can be done. So, hit that subscribe button. And lastly, turn that notification button on so you know we go live next at 2.30 in three hours exactly for the WrestleMania preview show. Guys, have a great rest of your Friday afternoon, and I will see you for part two of WrestleMania Friday as we preview the grandest stage of them all, and we preview all 14 matches that will go down this weekend in Philadelphia at WrestleMania 40.